Hey guys, how you doing? It's Henry at Motors and Blowers. Happy New Year. This is one of the last things that I have in the backyard to fix. Everything else is either running or working or whatever. With my OCD, I just need to get everything fixed before I start picking up other stuff. Right now in the middle of winter here in Long Island, New York, um, there's nothing on the streets to pick up. Snow, it's not snowing, so snow blowers aren't selling. I'm not selling anything. So right now, it gives me an opportunity to fill up my content with smalls. I've been doing that recently, if you've noticed. Uh, this is the power washer or pressure washer that I got from my friend Nick Iardi back in Motherload 36, 35, I don't remember. But uh, as with most pressure washers that you either find on the street or given to you for free, free. free. it usually doesn't work. <laughs> And uh, even if the engine might work, usually the water pumps on the pressure washers are busted. So I don't think that the, the uh, pump works on this, but I'm gonna try to get the engine running. It did come with this stuff uh, disassembled. This is obviously the uh, air, air cleaner cover, as well as the air cleaner base. And luckily I have a couple of screws there with a trashed air filter. If you look at this pressure washer, this is kind of like a commercial one. It's got, you know, nice wheels on it, really heavy duty base. And this is a Generac 2300 PSI pressure washer, 2.9 gallons per minute. Reason why I wanted to at least, you know, try to get this started was because this is a decent engine. This engine is an Intec 190cc horizontal shaft six horsepower it has a fuel shut off as you can see and your um, throttle if you want to call it a throttle you got the stop mechanism slow and then fast turtle and rabbit let's try to pull this and see if it's free free and as you can see you have a very simple uh, choke mechanism here which is open and closed which is easy kind of like a snowblower you know what I mean Fuel input over here, as you can see, it's been disconnected. Breather from the valve cover, muffler. There is no gas in here, and we'll check the Earl. It has dry rotted hoses. There's a little bit of play here. I'm gonna disconnect this. I'll probably take the whole pump off because if the pump is seized, it won't pull freely because it's if it's seized in there, the crankshaft won't move. So if it doesn't move or it's locked up, I'm gonna disconnect the water pump from it. Here you have another uh, oil dipstick check area on the left and right. And that's it, or right here. Wait a minute, then what's this? <laughs> I don't know what that is. Do you need special oil for a pump? This is the oil for the engine. I don't know. We'll uh, open both up and see. Let's check the oil real quick. It's got oil. A little brown. Better than black, I guess. Let's check what this white thing is. Messed up valve, uh, messed up ends here, so you can't really turn it very well. Huh. I don't really know what that is, but doesn't have anything in it. Hardly anything in it. Just a piece of straw. Yep, nothing in it. You think maybe this came with a longer dipstick that had a stick that went all the way down that matched exactly that? This could just be the, uh, an alternate oil dipstick where it would have a long dipstick, you know, measuring stick. Maybe, I don't know. But it looks like it's going down the same area as the oil check, you know? So it's probably just an alternate. It has like a thing over here where it looks like a spring hooked onto it. But it's, I don't know what it would be for. 
I'm gonna remove this hose here, it's in the way. I'm just gonna remove this thing here. This thing you can't pull back because it's rusted. Take this mechanism off so I can get the hose off. I don't anticipate it working. Look at that. Trash. I'm pulling this out. All right, we have disposed of the hose. Let's see if this thing pulls freely. Oh no. Oh no. It doesn't pull freely. It's seized. Let's take the, I'm gonna take the pump off because the pump may be restricting the movement of the crankshaft. As you can see, I successfully removed the pump. When I was banging on it, it was super rusty in this shaft over here. So even though I removed the bolts, the shaft still wouldn't come out. Also, you couldn't remove the bolts because the bolts would come out and be blocked by this set of bolts. So you had to pull it out a little bit, then loosen it, pull it out a little bit, then loosen it. And finally it did come free. Anyway, this super uh, rusty. And then when I was tapping it a little, all this corrosion came out of it. So I knew that this thing was seized. This pump is definitely not working. So I just went ahead and banged it and banged it until I got it off. Let's see now if the uh, crankshaft turns freely. And if it was the pump that was restricting the pull. Uh-uh. Nope. It wasn't that. The engine seized. Let's try to unseize it. Just to take a small precaution before we start trying to turn it uh, forcefully, I'm gonna remove the, uh, man, that, man, that's tight. That's what she said. That's what she said. <laughs> the ignition coil wire is super short. Take a small precaution. Take the spark plug out and blow some uh, penetrating oil into the uh, chamber so that um, it at least is a little bit lubricated in the bore when you try to turn it. Yep, quite a bit of corrosion, but no like oil spots or anything, but just rusty and corroded. Blow some PB blaster in here. Clean this spark plug out. Let's try to turn the crankshaft first with some channel locks on the outer part. Doesn't grip well. I want to avoid taking off the shroud and the flywheel to try to turn it. But it doesn't look like it. It's slipping. Ooh, I think I got it. Look, there we go. It's moving. We freed it up. Sweet. That penetrating oil inside the uh, spark plug hole 
lubricates the piston and rings if it was binding from rust or anything like that so that it doesn't you know uh, score the bore abruptly it feels a little weird like something's loose actually it's starting to free up pretty well right now yep cool let's see if it pulls now go slow yeah like butter A little bit of compression, I think. I need to oil this recoil starter. You can find the beginning of where that metal recoil spring is. And you can just spray uh, some penetrating oil in that little slit. And that'll get it into the area. Okay, after spraying the recoil with that penetrating oil, check it out now. It tracks. So now let's try to turn it over. Open the choke. Spray through the intake. Right into the um, intake manifold. I guess it's no on and off, right? Not like a Honda. Ooh, something. Not much, but it did something. So while we did see it smoke and pop and looks like it has spark, undoubtedly, uh, just with spray, if you take a look at the carburetor itself, looks like my friend Nick tried to take this apart at one time because the carburetor's not even on there loose let's take the carburetor bowl off well let's just take the carburetor off then and then as you can see this is an overhead valve so we can take the valve covers off and check out the valves i hope i don't have to take the head off maybe you saw it in time lapse maybe you didn't when i opened the when i took the bowl off all water came out and look at the condition of the emulsion tube area, completely jam-packed with crap. That's why we were hearing the popping, is because water was getting mixed with what I was shooting in there. I gotta clean this out. Okay, clean the carburetor, put it back on. I put that little tension spring back on there again, so there's no water. Just sprayed some stuff in there, closed the choke. Here we go. Ugh. Guess I'm gonna take the valve covers off. So I gotta check the valves. Maybe have to take the head off because maybe the valves aren't seating because of all the water gets stuck. So I have to remove that muffler cover 
then maybe the muffler, then the valve cover, and then maybe the head. Let's check it out in time lapse. So uh, after adjusting the valves to four and six intake and exhaust on the feeler gauge, I mean, it was off a little, but it's not enough to not start. Um, it could be that the valves are not seating, but I did feel like, you know, when I was doing the valves, it felt like it was okay. I mean, I can do a compression check next time, but I think maybe the timing is off. So it's possible that the um, flywheel key is sheared and therefore it's off a of timing that could be it because those are those are the symptoms the popping and stuff yes water does cause popping too low compression and the valves not seating also can cause popping but to remove the heads i got to remove the entire top of that because they have like a shroud that covers the bolts so major disassembly just to take the head off you know what i mean also major disassembly to remove the uh the, the shroud to the uh, the engine shroud to access the flywheel to remove the crankshaft bolt to jar the flywheel off to check the key. So it could be the key, could be the valves not seating, could be compression issues, could be a whole lot of things, you know what I mean? So uh, it's cold now and I don't feel like doing anymore. So I'll continue this when I continue this. Ah, oh, that's a shame. So it's the next day. We can rule out the compression a bit by pouring just a little bit of two-stroke oil into the uh, into the spark plug hole. Because if it fires up a little bit better now, you can kind of rule out the compression. I just didn't want to take this whole top off to check the flywheel key, you know what I mean? But I have a feeling that we have to anyway. So let's see if it uh, turns over now, since we improved the compression. Spray the carburetor, give it some fuel. put the two stroke oil in there to improve the compression and it fired up and turned over. What does that mean? That means that it has low compression, which means that the rings or the pistons or something like that is bad. So unfortunately, maybe this engine's no good. Should we put some oil, uh, gas into it to see if it runs by itself? Carburetor's clean. All I have to do is just attach this fuel line onto the nozzle, put a little bit of gas in there, see what happens. What we did was save me from taking off the flywheel because we know it's not the flywheel key. The timing is correct. And the only thing that seems to be the problem is that it has low compression. Otherwise, it runs. Let's see if it runs on its own since the carburetor is clean. It is leaking from the, uh, from the input. And the bowl. <laughs> it's leaking quite a bit, actually. Just see if it starts up and runs by itself. Take it off choke.
like a mother, that's all. All right, it is dripping like crazy. Well, you know what? Maybe after running it for a while, you loosen things up. Maybe now we have good compression. <laughs> Maybe not. Choke it again. something i think we fixed it you know why because over the time that's been sitting for so long stagnant nothing going on except for a lot of rust buildup in the bore due to the water being inside the whole thing right obviously this thing was sitting outside for a long time water got into the carburetor probably into everything inside right um and Rust had built up from it just sitting for so long, right? So the bore walls of the engine are rust coated, therefore not being super smooth, right? And because it's not super smooth, you're not going to have great compression because of the piston rings and the seal in the bore. So when you pour the two stroke oil in there, it creates a seal, a vacuum airtight seal, if you will, and then you're able to start it and you run it for a while. So while it's running, right, the piston rings are scraping the sides of the wall with the lubricated uh, uh, bore from the two stroke oil, cleaning out the rust. Therefore, now you have good compression, so it restarts again. I mean, I don't know if this is a super reliable engine without some further testing, but it runs great now. <laughs> it runs on its own and idles well. And starts pretty easily. I just uh, either need a new carburetor or a new bowl gasket. You know what? Let's shut that off so it's not dripping anymore. But you just need a new fuel line and uh, maybe fix the gasket on the on the jet nut, the jet nut on the bowl, and then uh, it wouldn't leak anymore. And uh, you'd have a good six horsepower Brooks and Stratton horizontal shaft engine <laughs> for whatever you wanted to do. I mean, I guess you could make a a good go-kart out of this or um you know replacement engine for uh pressure washer you know anything you know these uh these horizontal engines are pretty cool but uh i don't know what i'm gonna do with it but i wanted to get it going and i'm just stoked that you know you just you take a break from it you walk away from it from because yesterday i was fed up with it because i <laughs> i just didn't want to work on it anymore and you wake up today fresh and uh clear-brained and he said you know what i want to tackle this and uh just thinking about it overnight you know let's, let's try the two-stroke oil it saved me from having to remove all this stuff just to check the flywheel key obviously it wasn't that so it saved a lot of time and uh, the two-stroke oil test was great you know and now i think it has just fine compression it starts up when you want it to just gotta fix the leaks that's all but anyway that's what i wanted to do i wanted to get one of the smalls out of the backyard and just make sure it ran so I knew what to do with it in the future. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. We'll see you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. Oh, and Happy New Year. See you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. Later.